Yes. Patuloy ka po natin.
Maghari ka o Diyos Ngayon at kailangan O Diyos Maghari ka Hallelujah Let's worship the Lord
For thousands of years, every morning and evening, Jewish people have prayed these well-known words as a way of expressing their devotion to God. They're called the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And as for you, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. We're going to look at the word soul. The Hebrew word is nefesh. It occurs over 700 times in the Old Testament. The common English translation of this word is soul, and that's kind of unfortunate. Here's why. The English word soul comes with lots of baggage from ancient Greek philosophy. It's the idea that the soul is a non-physical, immortal essence of a person that's contained or trapped in their body to be released at death. It's a ghost in the machine kind of idea. This notion is totally foreign to the Bible. It's not at all what nephesh means in biblical Hebrew. The most basic meaning of nephesh is throat. Like when the Israelites are wandering in the wilderness, they're hungry and thirsty, and they say to God, we miss the cucumbers and melons we had in Egypt. Now our nephesh has dried up. Or when Joseph was hauled off into slavery in Egypt, his nephesh was put into iron shackles. But nephesh doesn't only mean throat. Since your whole life and body depend on what comes in and out of your throat, nephesh could also be used to refer to the whole person. Like in Genesis, there were 33 nephesh in Jacob's family, that is, 33 people. In the Torah, a murderer is called a nephesh slayer, and a kidnapper is called a nephesh thief. On the first pages of the Bible, both humans and animals are called a living nephesh. And if the life breath has left a human or animal, the nephesh remains. It's just called a dead nephesh, that is, a corpse. So, in the Bible, people don't have a nephesh. Rather, they are a nephesh, a living, breathing, physical being. Now, that might surprise you because most people assume the Bible says the soul is what survives apart from the body after death. And while the biblical authors do have a concept of people existing after death, waiting for their resurrection, they rarely talk about it. And when they do, they don't use the word nephesh. So even though nephesh is often translated as soul, the Hebrew word really refers to the whole human as a living physical organism. In fact, this is why biblical people can often use this word to refer to themselves. And it gets translated me or I. Like in Psalm 119, most translations read, let me live that I may praise you. In Hebrew, the poet literally says, let my nephesh live that it may praise you. By using nephesh, the poet emphasizes that their entire being, their life and their body offer thanks to God. In the Song of Songs, the young woman constantly refers to her lover as the one my nephesh loves. And of course, love isn't just an intellectual experience, it's an emotion that activates your whole body, your entire nephesh. This helps us understand the brilliance of other biblical poets who could combine multiple meanings of nephesh in one place. Like in Psalm 42, we read, as the deer pants for the water, so my nephesh pants after you. My nephesh thirsts for the living God. So on a physical level, your throat can be thirsty, like a deer's, but then that physical thirst can become a metaphor for how your whole physical being longs to know and be known by your creator. Which brings us all the way back to the Shema. To love God with all of your nephesh means to devote your whole physical existence to your creator, the one who granted us these amazing bodies in the first place. It's about offering your entire being with all of its capabilities and limitations in the effort to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. And that's the Hebrew word for soul. Praise God! Today we have learned the word nefesh, which is the Hebrew word of soul. Let our nefesh longs to worship God who satisfy our needs. Thanks to the Bible Project for sharing this short but very detailed Bible video. So church, next week we'll let. Don't skip this part because every week we learn many things from the Bible. Moving on now with our giving. And for our time of giving, I would like to share to you this Bible verse from the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. And here's what the Holy Scripture says. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. So giving grows our faith in God. The verse we have read truly encourages us to take the steps of faith and to give. Trusting God to meet our needs because our God is incredibly generous and God loves to give good gifts to His children. And allow me to share this truth that God meets our needs personally because our God 
is a good provider and he is a good father to his children. God meets our needs liberally. God supplies all our needs and even we don't ask him, he provides it. At hindi talaga mauunahan ang mga biyaya ni Lord sa buhay natin. Amen po ba? And lastly, God meets our needs gloriously. God gives generously and gloriously because even His Son, Jesus, He gave to us that is really a very, very expensive gift that, and thank God for His overflowing grace in our lives. By faith, we can only give and by faith, we can only share. Praise God because of the gift of faith, it makes us to be generous. And thank God for those of you who generously share their tithes, offerings, and love gifts. For those of you who wants to support our church, we have three ways on how to give and it is flashing in your screen now. Yes, church. Once again, welcome to Grace Unlimited Church at Home. I'm Ate Jackie and it's my privilege to share the word of God. And today, before we proceed, allow me to start my message by asking you this question. Do you ever feel like your thoughts consume you? Most of us struggle with negativity, worry, and other toxic thoughts. And we probably all heard how much our thoughts impact our lives. Stephen Forty quoted, The thoughts you keep in the loop determine the direction of your life. Thousands of thoughts cross our minds through the day. Many people even complain that they can sleep immediately after going to bed as their brain does not stop thinking. Do you know how many thoughts your mind thinks each hour of the day? Experts estimate that the mind thinks between 60,000 to 80,000 thoughts a day. That's an average of 2,500 to 3,300 thoughts per hour. That is a great number of thoughts, and it's incredible, isn't it? If we're, we were able to sell each thought, we would be rich in no time. Kidding aside, in fact, it would be great if our thoughts were all good, but many of them are negative and toxic. In normal daily life, we might not always be aware of this endless thinking. Most of this thinking is an automatic process, a mental habit. It is only when we need to focus on some particular thing that we became aware of the many thoughts that keep distracting our focus and attracting our attention. Sometimes, this endless flow of thoughts is tiring and exhausting. Have you ever felt that, especially when you are anxious or worried? Sometimes, in order to draw the attention away from these thoughts, people drink, take drugs, or engage themselves in hobbies or in various activities. But this isn't the right solution. Just think, how much energy and time you could have saved if you could reduce the number of your thoughts? Just think, how much better focus you could possess if thoughts did not bother you? And just think, how much inner peace, calmness, and happiness you would have enjoyed if there were a way to stop all these thoughts, which add nothing to your life. So that would be a lot of thinking. Let's give, let me give you an example. Let me ask you this. If you are driving, do you keep the engine of your car running after arriving at your destination? Well, you certainly switch the engine off, right? So why not do so with your mind? You might say that, this is an automatic process, which cannot be stopped. Well, it's wrong. It is an automatic process, but it can be stopped or at least slowed down. So if you feel trapped in a cycle of wrong thinking, and if you ever feel like you have little control over the thoughts in your head, well, this message is for you. And the title of my message today is Handling Your Thoughts in Grace Way. So one of the most important things we need to learn and teach others is how to guard, strengthen, and renew our minds because the battle for sins always starts in the mind. Amen po ba? Our mind is the battleground for sin. It's where every temptation happens. It's where every sin actually starts. The sin of pride starts in the mind. The sin of loss starts in the mind. The sin of hatred starts in the mind. Fear starts in the mind. Resentment, jealousy, envy, they all start in the mind. Worry being stressed out, that's all in the mind. So the battlefield for sin is thought, not around us. It's thought in our mind. 
So Paul talks about this battle that's constantly going on in our minds. And he says this in Romans chapter 7, verse 22 to 25. I love to do God's will as far as my new nature is concerned. But there is something else deep within me, my lower nature that is at war with my mind and wins the fight and make me a slave to the sin that is still within me. In my mind, I want to be God's willing servant. But instead, I find myself still enslaved to sin. Now, notice the words in the scripture. I want you to pay attention to the word war, the word fight, the word enslaved, and the word mind. So these are the battles that are going on in our brain. Now, sometimes we are conscious of this mental battle that's going on. And at other times, we're not conscious of it. But it's one of the causes of mental fatigue. That's why I started with a question. Do you ever feel like your thoughts consume you? Because we're in a constant battle for our mind. And our mind gets tired because of the battle of things we want to think and things we don't want to think. So for short, too much thinking, my friend, will not do you good. Can you please say it to the person beside you or comment it below? So... If you think too much, that will only lead you to negative thoughts. And that negative, self-defeating thoughts will only kill your happiness. And think too much, and you'll create a problem that was not even there in the first place. Amen po ba? So many different suggestions can come into, into the mind. The world puts suggestions in our minds that are false. And we are bombarded with those false ideas all the time. And of course... Satan makes suggestions all the time. But our problem is much deeper than Satan because the reality, we are all mentally ill and the mental illness is called sin. And the Bible uses a dozen different phrases for the condition of our minds under sin. Our minds are confused, anxious, close, evil, restless, rash, and even deluded. Well, the Bible talks about here a depraved mind as what it says in Romans chapter 1 verse 20 28 because those people refuse to keep in mind the true knowledge about God he has given them over to corrupted minds so that they do the things that they should not do second a sinful mind Romans chapter 8 verse 7 for sinful nature is always hostile to God it never did obey God's law and it never will and lastly a worldly mind philippians chapter philippians chapter 3 verse 19 says the way they live is leaving them to destruction they have replaced god with their own desires they do shameful things and they are proud of what they do they think only about earthly things so these are the default condition of the mind and this condition actually remains unless the mind is renewed this is why Renewing the mind is a command. We need to renew the mind or else we will have to live all our life with our old mind, which is deadly and destructive. Romans chapter 8 verse 6 affirmed that if your thinking is controlled by your sinful self, there is a spiritual death. But if your thinking is controlled by the spirit, there is life and peace. That is why it is most important for us to learn how to manage our mind. Pastor Rick Warren quoted this, Manage your mind because your thoughts control your life. Proverbs 4 verse 23 says, Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. We control what we eat. We control what we believe. Amen? We control what we drink, but we don't always control what we allow in our minds. And the Bible tells us that every action in our life starts with a thought. So if you don't think it, it doesn't happen, right? If you think good things, then good things are gonna happen and you're gonna do good things. But if you have bad thoughts, you're going to tend to act in bad ways. So your mind controls and shape your life, amen? Praise God. So truly, our thoughts have tremendous ability to shape our life for good or for bad. Consider this an example. Maybe you accept a thought someone told you when you were growing up or even by now that you're worthless. You don't matter. 
Or when you entertain such thought as, I am nothing, I have no value, I don't have power over my emotion of loss or anger, or that your current situation is hopeless and you will not overcome it or you will not have a better life. Whose thought is that? Ask yourself. Again, ask yourself whose thought is that? So if you accepted that thought, even though it was wrong, it has shaped your life. So we must choose what thoughts we will let, we will let affect us for good or for bad. I know all of us face the challenge of controlling our thoughts, which have a huge impact in our actions and emotion. And sometimes we feel out of our control. Honestly, most of us struggle with negativity, worry, and other toxic thoughts. Well, always remember that Satan's number one strategy is to plant unhealthy thoughts in your mind, repeating them over and over until you start to think that they are your own thoughts. Satan uses our thoughts as a way of trying to control us. Now, assess or ask yourself, who control your thoughts? Well, the Bible is full of truth about the importance of controlling our mind. Christ gave us renewed thoughts and the Bible to guide us toward thinking like Christ, like godly and positive thoughts. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 reminds us to take every thought captive. We destroy, we destroy demolish arguments and every pretensions that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Taking thought captives means controlling them instead of letting them control you. It simply means we should not let our thoughts dictate our lives. We must choose to capture our thoughts and taking our thoughts captive will be one of the toughest battle we engage in. Diba minsan parang it's much easier to just entertain the toxic thought? But when the Bible says to take our thoughts captive, captive that means we have the power to do something about it. As Christians, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. With the Holy Spirit help, we can manage our thoughts. Amen po ba? So allow me to give you an example. Let's say there's someone in your life you need to forget, or to need to forgive rather. Every day, you remember what they did to you in the past. And worst, makita mo lang yung pagmumuka or marinig mo lang yung boses Di ba kumukulo na yung dugo mo? Can you relate? Even if it happened ages ago, you couldn't seem to let it go or heal from it. And you might start to have thoughts like, I don't really need to forgive this person or what they did to me is unforgivable. Well, brothers and sisters, this is the toxic thought you must take captive. Recognize that it is causing you to inner disturbances. Then, Choose truth from God's word. Push the toxic thought aside and pray. Ask God to help you extend the same forgiveness to that person. And then you do it again and again until it takes. You'll know healing is occurring when you look back on the situation and the sting of pain isn't as intense. You will see it as something that happened to you. So when I say something that happened to you, that is past tense na. Not something that is happening to you. Amen po ba? So Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 give us a list of things that we are to think on. Diba? Ano po bang sinabi sa verse na yon? It says there, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And Romans chapter 12 verse 2 instruct us to be transformed how? By the renewing of our mind. Do not confirm to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. That by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So all this scripture give a strong indication that we are responsible for controlling our thoughts. But the question is, how? Look, God doesn't give us commands without good reasons. He knows that our thoughts will run or ruin our life because an uncontrolled mind is an out-of-control life. And if you are looking to live a more peaceful life, the goal is not only to change the mind, but, the, but to change the mindset. 
You see, the mindset is where the default reaction takes place. You know, those default reactions that you just look back on and you're like, I wish I didn't do, but you couldn't help it in that moment. Those are default reactions. And the mindset is what has been so deeply ingrained in us that it seems automatic. And when you change the mindset, you can successfully change your life. But it all begins with changing the mind. And we do that by taking control of our thoughts. So brothers and sisters, it is extremely important to learn how to control our minds because again, our thoughts control our life. Our mind is a battleground for sin, but it's also the key to peace and happiness. Amen po ba? So what do you do when you are bombarded by an average of about 60,000 thoughts per day? How do you possibly control all of them? Well, there are four life action points from the Word of God on how we can handle our thoughts in a grace way. And let's start with the first way. First one, rebuke sinful thoughts. Do you know that one inch above your head is called airspace? Everything that flies has the right to fly over your head, including birds. You cannot forbid them to do this. However, when they start to drop straws and plan to nest on top of your head, that you can decide whether you will allow it or not. Sinful thoughts are like birds flying over your head. They just, they just pass by. But if they nest, they will lay eggs and give birth to death. And this you do not you and, and this you do not want, right? So what do you do? Don't entertain sinful thoughts. Rebuke them right away. Don't even let one straw to fall on your head. Well, surely walang gusto maiputan sa ulo, right? Kidding aside. As direct as it can be, rebuke them. Jesus said, Why do you entertain evil thoughts in your hearts? And that's what it says in Matthew chapter 9, verse 4. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said, Why do you entertain evil thoughts in your hearts? To have evil thoughts fly on top of your head is not sinful. They become sinful when you entertain them in your heart. That's why Jesus asked the question, why do you entertain evil thoughts? Because the truth is, you don't have to. Instead, you need to rebuke them and they will surely go away. Rebuke them in the name of Jesus, as it's written, In my name shall they cast out devils. Mark chapter 16, verse 17. This includes the devilish uh, thoughts. It says, These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name and they will speak in you languages plain and simple don't entertain evil thoughts cast them out the apostle paul writes we demolish arguments and every pretensions that set itself up against the knowledge of god and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to christ so the praise the obedience of christ here refers to the finished work of christ amen po ba? and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Arrest every sinful thought in your mind through the finished work of Christ, where sin has lost its power and grace has its abundance. As it says in Romans chapter 5, verse 20, God's law was given so that all people could see how sinful they were. But as people sinned, more and more, God's wonderful grace become more abundant. Great James writes, therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So the word resist comes from the original Greek word antistemi, which literally means to stand against, to stand against the devil. This is where we get the word antihistamine, a particular drug for, for allergy. So when sinful thoughts try to invade your mind, don't play dead. Stand your ground, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And the word flee comes from the original Greek word pugo, which literally means to run away. So ito hindi lang siya yung not just walk away, but run away. And to vanish. Not to stay any longer, but to evaporate. So start rebuking sinful thoughts now. Amen po ba? Then second one, second way is regulate, regulate sensual, sensual entries. So the gateway is your natural senses, more particularly the eyes and the ears. What you see 
and here directly affect the mind. So if they are sinful, the mind gets dirty. The Lord Jesus said, Anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Job made this robust. When we say robust, Job made this strong commitment. And he said, I made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a girl. The message vividly and graphically renders it. I made a solemn pact with my eyes never to undress a girl with my eyes. So there are plenty of things we see every day that are out of our control. But much of what we see can be prevented. What we put in front of our eyes is a big deal. So if you feel that you have too many toxic thoughts, what is it could be causing them? So here are some sensual entries. First, could it be things on TV or television, movie or news? Second, social media or the internet. It's wise to analyze the things we are viewing daily and ask God to show us what would be a good thing to decrease or eliminate altogether. Much like, much like we need to watch what we put in front of our eyes, we also need to consider what is going into our ears. What we hear affects our thoughts just as much as what we see. Have you noticed what types of music or podcast possibly cause a toxic thoughts in your mind? So when I say music, I'm referring to the worldly music. Music, and if I may add, friends, sensual dating, is also a sensual entry. The Apostle Paul writes, Let us walk properly, as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in the lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Make no provision for flesh. Simply means, don't provide sinful thoughts to your mind by a sensual entries. So remember, what you don't feed will die. Amen po ba? And third one, refuse to be idle. Remember the old adage, an idle, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. The Apostle Peter said, prepare your minds for action. So prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. Similarly, the Apostle Paul warns those who are idle. He told them, we hear that some among you are idle. They are not busy. They are busy bodies. Such people we command and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and earn the bread they eat. Last uh, way is reflect on godly thoughts. What does reflect on God's thought means? What are God's thoughts? What does it mean to reflect? The Bible is God's written thoughts. What do you see when you look at the mirror? You see the reflection of yourself, right? Same here. When you look at the mirror of God's word, you can see the reflection of how God sees you. You can see in the spiritual mirror the reflection of God's wonderful thoughts towards you. God said, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. So we need to give our minds something to chew on. The mind cannot be in neutral position. It has to be engaged either in bad thoughts or good thoughts. So there is no middle ground. While the law of impenetrability states the inability of two portions of matter to occupy the same space at the same time. Applying this simply means that if the mind is fully occupied with godly thoughts, then there is no space for sinful thoughts. This is why the apostle reproved us to fill our minds with godly thoughts. He writes in conclusion, and I will end my message in this verse. He says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 again, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is novel, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So the verse tells us to think about things that are true. Noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and worthy of praise. Consider each word mentioned in the scripture. First, true. One of the most important things to consider above our thought is, are they true? Totoo nga ba siya? Too often our thoughts are just not true. We need to focus on what is authentic, what is real, and lines up with God's word. 
noble. Being children of God, we're in the highest of ranks. Amen? Our thoughts should be the royal and regal. Not in an arrogant way, but in, in not allowing ourselves to think in an unkind or repulsive manner. So when we say repulsive, meaning to say in a disgusting manner. Right? So many people want to be right. To be the one who is never wrong. But often, we don't allow the desire for being right to permeate our thoughts. Thinking right thoughts means allowing accuracy and appropriateness to guide us. Pure, to be pure in heart and thought is not as difficult as it seems. It's simply choosing to think on ethical, good, upright, and honest things. Lovely, this is a word that isn't used much, but it should be. To think lovely thought means to see the beautiful and stunning in life and allow our minds to think upon those things. Admirable? To be admired is something most people want. But do we want admirable thoughts? Thoughts that are incredible? I mean thoughts that are credible and distinguished and allow us to live in such a way that is commendable? Excellent. The best of the best is what excellent is. When our thoughts are excellent, they are superb, exceptional, and fabulous. Excellent thoughts lead us to live excellent lives. And worthy of praise? What thoughts are worthy of praise? Thoughts about God, His ways, His plans, and His creation, to name a few? It's safe to say that when our thoughts are on Him, that's a good thing. Amen? So the only way to handle our natural and sinful thought is the grace way, through the finished work of Christ. The Apostle Paul said, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Again, it refers to the finished work of Christ. So we must continually be filling our minds with things that brings life. We must look for the good. We have to be mindful of the devil and don't let him have free reign in your mind because we can't live in freedom if we constantly allow our, our toxic thoughts to monopolize our, our, to monopolize our thinking. So the best way to battle them is by applying scripture in our daily life. Fixing our thoughts on Jesus by aligning our own thinking under the rule of this, of his truth, and live our lives to honor him in the way we can certainly free our minds from toxic thinking one thought at a time. Amen. Hallelujah. So once again, allow me to share to you the ways on how we can handle our thoughts in grace way. First, rebuke sinful thoughts. Second, regulate sensual entries. Third, refuse to be idle. And last one, reflect on godly thoughts. So that brings me to the end of my message. So please join me as I close in prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised. Father, we thank you so much for the success of another day today. Our hearts adore you, Lord. Thank you for life of each one of us who is here with us physically and even virtually. As we take our worship, as we take our praise and prayer from this place and into our daily lives, may our lives be sustained through the love of our Heavenly Father. Father, we thank you for the gift of intellect. You gave us our mind, which is our greatest asset, and it's also the greatest battleground. And we realize that a lot of times there are a battle going in on which sometimes we are not aware of. We ask for your help to put into practice what we've just heard and learned today, Lord. Lord, help us to do what you've called us to do, to make these choices on a daily basis. Feed our minds with truth, free our minds from destructive thoughts by taking every thought captive, and help us focus our mind on the, on the right things. Help us to discern the devil's scheme so we will not fall into temptation. And Lord, today we humble ourselves to you and we want to make up our mind to obey your word and to believe your truth so that our life may be truly transformed. We pray this in your mighty name and all the children of God will say, Amen. Hallelujah. So let me take this opportunity to share to you the gift of grace. God's grace is overflowing in our lives because God loves you and for, and for those of you who wants to encounter the love of Jesus, please follow this prayer and take it as your own. Lord Jesus, 
I admit that I am a sinner. I admit I cannot save myself and apart from you, I will surely perish. Forgive me for all the sins that I have committed. I believe that you died, rose again, ascended in heaven, and will surely return. I accept you in my heart as Lord and my personal Savior. Amen. Wow! Praise God! Let's give a let's give our God a, a big clap offering. And for those of you who receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, welcome to the family of God. And if you are looking for a church family, Grace Unlimited is here for you, and we would love to welcome you. And you may join us in our spiritual activities. So, church, be excited to be part of our share group Bible study. It happens every Monday, 8 p.m. here in UAE, and we also have our Bible study in Philippines every Tuesday, 8 p.m. Philippine time. And I want to encourage you to join us as well in our prayer meeting every first and third Friday of the month. If you have any prayer requests, please feel free to click the link in the description box below or you can send as well through personal message. You may follow Grace Unlimited and all our social media accounts which is flashes on your screen now. If you want to bless someone, please click the link of this video and support our church by sharing the message of grace. And be reminded to invite and encourage your family and friends to join us next week in our worship service. And we will be hearing another powerful message of God to be shared by our beloved pastor, Pastor Jeff. So as we end this service, may the grace of God overflow in your life and let God's thoughts fill your mind. Always remember that you are highly blessed and favored and you are Charito. God bless you all. Shalom. Walang ibang mamahalin Walang ibang